What's up guys, it's your boy Jay from JS Films and today we're going to be unboxing and doing a quick overview of the new Blackmagic Micro Cinema camera from Blackmagic Design. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. Unboxing. Plastic. So yeah, people have been waiting for this camera. Supposed to come out in July, I believe, along with the Blackmagic Ursa Minis, I think. Finally, they released it last week, and we got ourselves a copy. So, let's go ahead and start. It says, includes DaVinci Resolve, but I think that means the actual free version, not the paid studio version, so don't get that twisted. Awesome, the typical welcome booklet from Blackmagic. It's probably gonna have, all right. It has software and manual and the DaVinci Resolve that comes with it, which is the free version that you can download as well from their website. Cool, let's put that to the side. All right, has some adapters here for international use. I believe this is for the Middle East. This one is for, dude, where is this one from? No idea, that's weird. This one is for United States. And this one is for Europe. Cool, comes with all that goodness. Okay, so it also comes with a cable. Oh wow, actually includes a battery as well. That's pretty sweet. I'm not even gonna get that because I'm not gonna use it. I'm just gonna leave it there. And it comes with a battery. That's sweet. Comes with an LPE6 battery. I'm not sure who made it, but it just says Lion Battery Pack or Leon Lion, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the camera. Jeez. Wow. This thing is tiny. Way smaller than the pocket for sure. I didn't know it was gonna be this small. That's, I have a really small hand because I'm Asian. And look at that. That's crazy small. But yeah, there goes the unboxing. And now what I'm gonna do is actually power it up and answer some of the most frequently asked questions about this camera. All right, guys. So here is the Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera. Let's go ahead and just Look around it a little bit. You can see here's a microphone input, your SD card slot, your battery bay back here. Let me see if I can rack focus so you can see it better. Okay. An actual HDMI. It's not the mini or micro from the, uh, the pocket cinema camera. It's an actual HDMI slot, which is a big plus. And this is your expansion bay here if you want to use a wireless cable or whatever monitor, or if you're ha having to put this camera on a drone, you'll use that as well. You have your record button up here, play, rewind, fast forward, menu, and then power. So let's go ahead and fire this camera up. So the first question I'm gonna be tackling is, how do you control this camera? Do you need to actually buy a micro, I mean, sorry, a black magic design video assist to control it? The answer is gonna be no. I have an aperture monitor here, HDMI monitor, that I'm gonna be using with the black magic micro cinema. So let's go ahead and just put our HDMI plug in. Power up our monitor. And then we will power up our camera by pressing the power button. Hold it, and then the light's gonna come on right here. And there you go. I'm gonna go uh, get a close up of this screen so you can see all the menus and whatnot. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So let's go ahead and go through the menu of the Blackmagic Micro Cinema camera. 
Now I got some frequently asked questions, like I said. Number one was, how do you control this camera without a monitor? Do you have to use a VA or not? Obviously, you can just use a regular HDMI monitor and it will work. Now, the next question is, does it shoot raw three to one? So let's see if it does. Go to menu. You can see that the codec is actually at raw. You're gonna press play to select, press play again, and then change it to the raw three to one. And as you can see, it actually does shoot raw three to one. So that's answered. The next question is global shutter. Does the camera have global shutter? No, it does not. It was removed last week when they announced the camera being released. They took away the global shutter from the micro cinema camera and the Ursa Mini 4.6K. So there's no more global shutter for this camera. They planned it, but it did not work out. All right, does it have the next question is, does it have 60 frames per second progressive? Now, a lot of people are asking this because some of the new uh, peop, uh, new customers or new owners of this camera does not see the raw 60 frames per second. And it's because they don't have the correct uh, SD card inside the micro cinema camera. If you want to have 60 frames per second enabled, you will need an approved SD card. I have the approved SD card, I have a SanDisk Extreme Pro, so I'm going to go ahead and choose 60 frames per second at RAW. Press play to deselect, and we're going to go down, ooh, wrong way, we're going to go down, come on, oh, let's go to camera, we can go down by using forward, I'm going to go to go frame rate, press play again to select and we're gonna increase it. 50 frames per second, 59.94, and then 60 frames per second. So it does shoot raw three to one at 60 frames per second. That's amazing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go through all the menus so you can see what they all look like. I'm gonna move down, I'm gonna select 60 frames per second. It has a time lapse, wow, that's awesome. Auto exposure is obviously going to be always me. Um, auto exposure, sorry, is going to be a manual trigger for me. ISO 800, shutter angle, white balance. All right, let's go to the audio tab. Let's deselect. Let's move to audio. Sorry. If you press the menu, you can go back. So let's go to forward, other way. Press select again. Press the play button. AGC for audio, you can turn it off and on. Uh, if you don't know what automatic gain control is, it was really popular with the DSLRs. Usually if you want cleaner audio, you would turn that off if you use a preamp, so I'm going to leave that off. Audio input is camera or inputs, because it has that microphone input in the back of the camera. I'm going to use camera for now, because it has a built-in mic. Okay. It has microphone levels, input levels, line or mic, channel one input, channel two, channel two input, audio timecode input. Wow, that's neat. It has an audio timecode. That's awesome. All right, we'll go back by pressing menu. Let's go to monitor. Press play to select. HMI overlays on frame, gu uh, frame guides. Let's see. Let's look at the frame guides. Has HD HDTV 43, 24, 240 by 1, 239, 235, 185, and you have your rule of thirds or your uh, third guide or grid. Wow, which is it has all the same frame guides as the Ursa Mini, which is pretty awesome. So let's go back, and you can decrease the opacity of the guide. It's pretty cool. HDMI meters is your audio meters, I'm guessing. Has compo uh, composite output format, focus speaking, you can have it on too. You can choose a dynamic range or video or raw. So we'll be trying that out later. Basically what that dynamic range is, is 
what you're seeing on your monitor, will it be video or will it be raw? Will it have contrast or no contrast? We're going to test that out. That's actually one of the questions people want to know. It has built-in Zebra. Have your Zebra levels. Tally light brightness. Not sure what that is. Maybe it's this green light here. Let's mess around with it. Yep, sure is. We can turn it off, but um, we'll leave it on just so no, we know the camera is on for now. Display battery percentage on and off. And that's it for monitoring. So we'll go back, press the menu again. Let's go to setup. Setup has the camera number, the date, time, card. You can format it. So you can go ahead and format my SD card. I have 256. Um, I'm gonna change that to XFAT. Sweet. Go down. Format card, and it's gonna format it to XFAT. All right, guys. All right, so the um, formatting took about two minutes or so. So let's go ahead and move over to the remote functions. Now, I'm not going to be using this as with a remote, so, but um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the uh, options just because. Okay, iris, focus, zoom, ISO, shutter angle, white balance, audio levels, record, start, stop. Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing is putting a lens on this and I want to see if the output, the HDMI output will output a video um, Rec 709 instead of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera's raw-ish, video-ish. Pretty much you really didn't know what you were capturing when you're looking at an external monitor because it didn't output proper Rec 709 or H, uh, sorry, or uh, video. So we're going to see if what this camera will output to this monitor here. Will it be video or would it be raw? Stay tuned. All right guys, so now I have the camera and the lens and I'm using this adapter here. It's not a speed booster. This is a cheapo lens adapter, micro four thirds to Canon. And I have the micro cinema camera here with the adapter with a Sigma 1835 and we have the screen here. So the question was, will the Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera output Rec. 709 because the Pocket Cinema Camera did not? And as you can see, it is. That is Rec. 709, that's with color. You can see it here. Now I'm gonna change it to raw so you can see the difference. Menu. I'm going to go to, oh, sorry, press back. We're going to go to monitor, okay. I'm going to go to, should be dynamic range. Sorry, I missed it. Change that to video, I mean film. And do you see the difference? No color, log, Rec. 709. So yeah, that's awesome. It outputs Rec. 709 out of the HDMI. Sweet.